Hi everyone, I'm Jane Applegath and welcome to the Epic Vision Zone. Today's epic female entrepreneur, Marley Brody, is coming to us from Toronto, Canada, my hometown. Marley launched her company, Social Eyes Communications, in 2015. Her vision to fuel online marketing opportunities for business success so that entrepreneurs could fulfill their wildest potential. With a passion to follow her vision, Marley left her corporate job as a paralegal at one of Canada's leading litigation firms to pursue a career in business development and marketing. This is where she honed her skill in digital marketing, content creation, social media marketing, and business development. Her goal-oriented approach and ability to help clients develop a vision to drive growth is her fuel for success and the success of her clients. With a team of talented employees now at her side, Marley has expanded her influence, being featured in Women Entrepreneur, Women of Influence, Social Media Examiner, Small Business Trends, and much more. As a young female entrepreneur with a big vision to empower entrepreneurs just like her, and as a mother of two beautiful children ages three and four, Marley's motto keeps her going strong and steady. There are enough hours in the day to accomplish and grow, she says. There just needs to be a method to the madness. Welcome, Marley Brody. Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. So excited to have you on the show. I wanted to ask you, what made you decide to become an entrepreneur? That's a great question. Um, I would say that, you know, I've always had this innate um, sort of tenacity to do more. Um, I always wanted to strive to do more. Like, I guess you could say I have a little bit of the hustle in me. And, um, you know, when I was working at the law firm, um, it was great and I learned a lot, but there was just that, you know, internal voice saying, there's more out there. Um, and, you know, there's there's definitely something to be said about doing things for yourself and sort of waking up each day with a blank canvas and knowing that you can like write your own story. And I think that was sort of the, you know, the, the, the path pushing me forward to entrepreneurship. Right. So what I'm hearing is that probably corporate was a little slow for you, <laughs> maybe, possibly. You were so <laughs> bursting with ideas and, and imagination and so on and so forth. So that's that's really interesting because a lot of entrepreneurs feel the same way. They don't like to be in the box. You know, they like to have that expansion and be able to grow. And so moving from that corporate job with the stability of a paycheck and most likely benefits and all of that that goes with corporate, what was it like when you made that transition from going in, from employee to entrepreneur? Because a lot of women want to make that transition, but usually it's fear that holds us back. How was it for you? Yeah. Yeah. So there was definitely um, a lot of fear, a lot of what if scenarios that ran through my head. Um, I'm just by nature a what if person. And I, you know, I, I tend to, you know, over um, overthink a lot of um, scenarios. And so it was definitely very nerve wracking, like the process in general. And um, the way that things sort of happened and how things fell into place was actually quite um, serendipitous, I guess you could say. I, I got married. I was on my honeymoon. Um, I came back to um, Toronto and I was actually surrounded by a, um, a a family situation that afforded me some soul searching time. Um, I took a leave of absence from my um, position at um, the law firm that I was working at. And I really dug deep and it took a lot of time and a lot of support from my husband to sort of come to the conclusion like, Marley, what is it that you wanna do? Like, you know, we don't have children. We, you know, live in this, tiny little apartment, our expenses aren't through the roof. Um, and if there's a time to make a move, that time is now. And it's sort of, you know, nerve wracking, kept me up at night. Um, but I knew that I had to do something and that kind of pushed me 
and the direction to, to just do it. Yeah, to take the leap, right? Exactly. So sometimes it takes a life-changing uh, situation to make us realize that life is short and yes, it can be scary, yeah. but we need to reflect and say, is this really what my life is going to be about? And before we know it, you know, it's gone. And it's so, it's so encouraging to see that you did take the leap and, and, you know, you spread your wings and look at you now you're flying. <laughs> That's fabulous. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank so you. you're welcome. Solopreneurs often get stuck uh, in a situation where they constantly need the drive or they need to be reinforced to reach their goals and objectives. So what would you say is the key to keeping yourself driven and in that mode of um, always reaching for your goals and objectives? What what practices or what is it that helps you stay in that, that, that energy? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I would say a lot of um, the key to reaching you know, our goals and objectives is one, to make sure that you know what your goals and objectives are, to make sure that there's a clear vision. Um, you know, and, and I knew going in that my vision was, you know, if I'm gonna do something big, you know, you, you need a sort of plan for it. Um, I'm a big sort of um, person of, of trial and error. And I think that the um, sort of driving force behind it all is spending time and surrounding yourself with people who share in the same vision as you. For that, it's my husband and also the team that we've been able to build over the last five years. We all share in the same end goal. Um, and I think that that's so important, especially when setting your eyes on the prize, um, is how do you get there? with people who don't necessarily share in the same vision. So making sure that you take time to um, take a step back and assess what it is that we're all trying to accomplish as a team and how are we gonna like tread in the same direction? And I think that, you know, that's kind of a great sort of practice. And I think if you have people who are sur you're surrounded with who want the same things you do, you're all sort of going in the same way. Yes, that's so important. Um, it's interesting because uh, the other day we had a woman on and she said that one of the biggest issues was her friends and family because they knew her and they're like, what are you doing? Are you crazy? Have you lost your mind? And sometimes the closest ones to us, they're really just trying to protect us. But you know, when you tap into those people that um, share your vision or even love your energy and want to be part of what you're doing, it really helps lift you up and and keeps you on that road to yes, we can do this. You know, it, it's it's uh, it it really is surrounding yourself with people. I like to say I, I like to surround myself with people who give me encouragement and actually challenge me because they they oh, yeah. challenge Absolutely. me to to be better, right? Yeah, that's 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 100%. great too. Yeah. So you were lucky in the sense that you found your calling. Uh, it came to you in a roundabout way. You told me the story, which was fascinating, yeah. how you took advantage of an opportunity, which I'd love you to share. Um, and then just sort of go into how you resonated with that. What I'm trying to get to at here is that a lot of people, women especially, um, have a little trouble finding their calling. There, you know, we have mm -hmm. a broad interest in many things, but you came about it because you fell into it. And how would you recommend people go, uh, entrepreneurs go about finding their special niche, their gift? Yeah, um, that's such an uh, interesting sort of um, story that, you know, I went through. And I think that it really comes down for to looking, looking for signs. Um, I really believe that there's signs everywhere and you sort of almost have to, um, you know, look for them and allow and allow your sort of external circumstances to sort of drive you. So for me specifically, I was a paralegal. Um, I worked at a litigation firm. I um, was a legal assistant at the time to a litigator who had been practicing for 15 years. And I, I was bored in my position. Um, it didn't challenge me. It didn't allow me to like flex my creative muscles. And I loved being creative. And so 
she was in the midst of transitioning into business development and marketing for the firm, more, more specifically business development coaching. And she was working on a ranking submission for one of the lawyers. And I had asked her, you know, do you need any help with this? And she was like, yeah, absolutely. Can you, you know, dr help draft the submission for this lawyer to read one, uh, to rank, um, for one of the Rising Star Awards, which was a big accomplishment and accolade for um, sort of rising star lawyers in, in Canada. And what I really loved about it was that it was an opportunity for me to, to be creative, but to storytell. Um, and storytelling for me was something that I love, not even so much for myself, but I love to be able to tell other people's stories. Um, and so the more that I sort of got into the communication side of things um, and the more her name was Jane as well, she sort of took me under her wing and, you know, kept giving me things that, you know, allowed me to sort of experiment with marketing and social media and content creation. And it, it came to a point where, you know, it was very clear that that's the direction that I should be going. That's the stuff that, you know, I woke up every day excited about what new project would land on my desk and it sort of became clear to the point where jane had actually said to me you know is i, I can't see you doing this legal assistant thing much longer and so i think that it sort of comes down to finding out what it is that excites you and you know waking waking up and sort of allowing yourself to sort of discover what it is that, you know, you have the passion for, and then, you know, f sort of finding your calling and looking for those signs and allowing yourself to experiment in areas that you may not think that you, um, you know, have been primed to do. I love that. I, I love the look for the signs. So stay open to opportunity and then yeah. try then move into it you know give yourself the opportunity to see if that sign that's there is something that you would resonate with i love that because you're right a lot of us don't see the signs or we're so caught up in in what we have to do or what we're doing um and like you said you had that mentor who saw in you the passion that you had for creativity and the work that you put into it which was probably over and above the call of duty. Uh, and then she was like, yeah, Marley, I can't see you doing this litigation stuff. It's just not who you are, but I love that. So look for signs, stay open to opportunity, and then give yourself the opportunity to try it, to try something new. Yeah, that, I Absolutely. love that story. Yeah, it was really, really um, like serendipitous. <laughs> it really was. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. So now you've moved into the whole social media communication, digital communication, which is huge, especially even more so today. And it's just going to keep expanding and growing. The industry is in the billions, multi-billion dollars. Now you have said that social media is opportunity. I love that phrase. That That is your phrase. And explain what that means and why it's so important in business success? Yeah, so I mean, like you said, it is a billion dollar industry. It's sort of taken the communications and advertising world by storm. Um, and it's basically, you know, sort of taken off in a way where consumer behavior has changed. The, you know, the way that people sort of do their research now and are influenced by companies and brands and service providers are different than the way you know that and than the way things have been done previously you know beforehand you would you know i'm talking about years and years ago when you would open the yellow pages and you would look for a service provider or things would sort of happen by referral today you know the opportunity exists online um, and you want to be where your prospects are and your prospects and your competitors are online. Um, so 
you know, in the way where, you know, billboards and, and bus stops and magazine articles sort of, you know, were the traditional forms of advertising and past, now that has sort of transitioned online. And there's all sorts of, you know, awesome analytics and results driven, um, res results driven data that allows you to market and target market more effectively. So it's just, you know, it, it's it's an opportunity to um, reach and, and expose your brand and your business in a way that, you know, you've never been able to do before. Um, and and the, the analytics and the data, like that's the stuff that sort of gets online marketers very excited is, you know, with a billboard, we can't really tell you like how many people looked at the billboard to see what you do. But with social media, like we have all of those, all of that data, we can tell you how many people clicked over to your website, how many people engaged with your post. Um, and that's, that's opportunity for, for business owners. Yes, I could see that. I mean, you're so right. And it opens up the world. I mean, it, it's, you know, here we are, uh, you know, you're in, in Toronto, I'm in Arizona. Uh, you know, I've connected with women entrepreneurs in South Africa and Italy, Australia. It's just incredible. So I know a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, we get so busy in, in the world that we're doing, but we, we shy away from the social media only because obviously it needs an expert. And it does take a lot of time and it is a profession. So, you know, I always encourage entrepreneurs, um, if that is an area that is is uh, overwhelming for you, seek expertise because that's like, we have Marley here who's fabulous at what she does. She's very passionate, but it really will, will up level and accelerate your business. There's no question about it. And in fact, you mentioned branding and that just what goes right into my next question because brand positioning is so important and we hear a lot of it. So, uh, you know, people are like, oh yeah, it's the, you know, the branding, whatever. But as an entrepreneur, it very, it, I believe it's so important to not just be consistent, but to know what your brand is. So just extrapolate that for us. So. Uh, the entrepreneurs on can be getting some information and learning about the importance of brand, but what it really means. Yeah, so that is, it's a really important concept to actually understand. And the very first question that we ask any client or prospect when we start our discovery process is, what is your brand? And when I say brand, I'm not necessarily just referring to your logo and your colors and your typography, but your brand positioning. What's your messaging? What sets you apart from your competitors? You know, um, how do you stack up against your competitors? You know, I'll use an example, real estate agents. When you ask a real estate agent, what sets you apart from your competitors? An average agent will say, well, I really care about my clients or, you know, I can get you top dollar for your home. Yes, all agents can say that, but what really sets you apart? Like if I am in the market to list my home, why do I wanna list it with you and not one of the other thousands of agents in Toronto? So you really need to sort of dig deep and know what your differentiator is. Um, you need to know what your vision is and what your goals are and what your positioning is and what your voice is as a company. And that's always the first place to start before you even um, attempt at, at the online thing. It's really important to know, you know, who you are, what you offer, and what clients get out of working with you. And your brand um, will eventually formulate your reputation. Yes. Oh my gosh. I love that. Your brand will formulate your reputation. That's a takeaway. I, that's brilliant. So there was a, I love it. Yeah. So there was, there was a quote, um, that has always resonated with me and it, it goes by your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. I have. So yeah, absolutely. So imagine what someone might be saying about you. So now I'm just really curious to give an example. You said about a real, real estate in the industry because uh, that's everywhere right now. And mm -hmm. well, it always has been. So 
if you were asking a real estate agent, give us an example of what a realtor would say that sets them apart. I'm just really curious what that might be. Besides obviously getting the best price and da da da, what might they say? Yeah. So, I mean, there's there's niches, right? So we, we mm -hmm. work with an agent in Toronto and her niche is um, she's a single mom. And so she works with people who are selling the matrimonial home. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into selling the matrimonial home. And that's that's sort of her niche that sets her apart. So why would somebody who's going through a separation or a divorce want to seek out working with this agent is because she's been through it herself and she works with you know people who are going through similar situations so i know and i have i as the prospect would have the um confidence in her that she knows what i'm going through personally so that she could help me navigate that situation um and it's it's just very important to sort of you know, even like, right, I, I tell clients all the time, like, take a pen and paper and jot down what you think sets you apart. You know, are you, do you have a talent in staging homes? Do you have connections in staging a home that maybe other agents don't? Are you, do you specialize in um, selling or are you a buyer's agent? Um, you know, so what what is that um, differentiator that's going to set you apart. It could be a geographic area. It could be, you know, a niche. It could be a personal situation that it's afforded you the experience to, you know, delve into specific areas that makes you different than your competitors. And it's important to know what that is. I love that. It's, it's aligning yourself with your customer and they would resonate oh, with 100%. you in that, in that, yes, in that particular case because their story resonates with you. And, and funny enough, you, you went right into the story. So it's who you are. And I, I love this saying by Rumi, who you seek is seeking you. So, you know, that, that. that is something that, you know, resonates with somebody because you're aligning, you're both aligning each other. So I, I love that, the, the fact that branding starts there and some great information and takeaways. So changes in digital marketing now the landscape has yeah just exploded um especially over the last yeah. year and a half or so give us a little insight into the the changes in the digital marketing landscape oh man they <laughs> the landscape of digital marketing um it changes on the dime like it could change weekly, it could change daily, like Facebook can introduce a new um, a new tool that all of a sudden takes over the algorithm. We're seeing that now with Instagram Reels, whereas, you know, a year and a half ago, Instagram strategy included posting. You know, you need, you need some nice posts and you need to engage your followers. And now there's posts and there's stories and there's Reels and there's guides and there's, you know, um, there's there's sort of a, a method that goes into optimizing the algorithm so that you get seen. And so because the landscape is changing so frequently, it's so important for our team, at least, to stay apprised of trends that are happening, um, news that, that's going on. Um, you know, right now that's really big with Facebook is that the Apple iOS changes are happening. I don't know if you've heard about that, but basically Apple is allowing their users to opt out of being targeted through Facebook ads. And so that's going to totally change the way advertisers are able to target iPhone users on social media. And I'm talking about, you know, um, both big retail brands that rely on iPhone users to purchase their products, but also, you know, small businesses, small retail shops that have in past utilized iPhone users and, and utilized conversion strategy to target iPhone users. And so it's so important. I mean, Facebook and Apple have come out with direction on how to combat this change. And we're sort of going through this with all of our clients, making sure that 
um, you know, certain things are happening, event codes are being implemented. Um, you know, there's sort of like brand security things that need to happen and just staying apprised of, of changes and making sure that we're navigating the times in a way where our clients won't be negatively affected, but instead can take sort of, um, take advantage of opportunity within the sort of confines of what digital marketing offers as opportunity. Um, so I would say, I mean, in terms of like the digital marketing landscape, it is changing all of the time, um, sometimes way too fast. And it's just so important to stay on top of it. Yes. See, this is why we need you. <laughs> I was just like, whoa. <laughs> I was like, okay, I need Marley. <laughs> I was like, yeah. that's a whole, <laughs> this is why this is your profession because it is a completely encompassed profession. It's absorbing. It takes all this time it's and energy. Yeah. To keep not only up with all of what's happening digitally, but also, you know, to make sure your clients are branded properly and that they're, you know, you're getting the message out there and, oh, it's fantastic. Thank you, Marley. <laughs> I mean, thank God you're here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, well, that being the case, uh, thank you. That was very informative. So yes, we need to stay up on, on digital marketing and what's happening in the landscape. And uh, good luck if you have time for that, everybody, because I certainly don't, but <laughs> it's very important in your business because this is where the world is. This is where the world is now. It's not, it's going there. It is there. We don't have a choice, whether kicking and screaming like I have been for years, it, uh, it's just, that's the way it is. We got to get over it, you know? So yeah, that being yeah. the case, you know, you have some great questions that an entrepreneur needs to ask themselves when it comes to the benefits of digital marketing tools. For example, some key questions that we need to address to determine the most beneficial marketing tools. And there's something like, you know, understand your audience, that sort of thing. So just maybe highlight some of those questions that an entrepreneur needs to ask themselves when they're looking at the digital space. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the first thing that we get asked actually, when we are working with any new client is, you know, what platforms are right for me? Um, and there's no one answer. Um, it really depends on, you know, the client, their demographic, their target audience, um, where their target audience spends their time. So, you know, um, if you're a, I don't know, if you're a middle aged to older aged um, professional service provider and most of your clients, you know, are not on Instagram but are on LinkedIn, then LinkedIn's a place for you. Um, and it's so important to take the time to sort of vet your audience and get to know where they are where they're spending their time um, and how you can reach them effectively. So, you know, I'll, I'll give I'll give a few examples. You know, there's um, a lot we're, we're seeing a big shift in Instagram now where professional service providers, coaches, um, business development coaches, you know, real estate coaches, uh, life coaches, um, lawyers, law firms, financial service advisors, they're spending a lot of time on LinkedIn, but it's its actually the younger age demographic. A lot of the millennials and the, you know, the um, sort of, I, I would say like 25 to 35 year olds are spending a lot more time on Instagram and their immediate networks are more so on Instagram. Um, so for them, it's like, how can we develop a strategy to reach your audience where they are spending time, right? Uh, about a year ago, TikTok was all the rage, but it was all the rage for 18 to 20 year olds. So unless that's your target market, if you're in retail and you're e-commerce and you're trying to target the, you know, fresh out of high school, going into college and university, you may want to be on TikTok. Um, you know, so it's it's really about determining, you know, what platform is right for you based on your industry, your business and your target audience and sort of understanding that, like ask, ask your audience those questions. Where do you spend your time? You know, when you're online, where do you spend your time? It's always a great.
great sort of exercise to go through is to, you know, ask the questions and don't be afraid to ask the questions. And I think that's where a lot of people sort of struggle is they're afraid to ask they're afraid to ask for testimonials. They're afraid to ask for feedback. They're afraid to ask, you know, their their target audience, you know, what they're doing, where they're spending their time. How did they hear about you? Um, that's a big one. Did you ask your leads where they came from? Um, and and doing that research is just going to help you develop a stronger target marketing strategy. Yeah, that's one of the vital practices. In fact, that was you went right into the next question, which is great because <laughs> some of the vital practices of being an entrepreneur are those that you just mentioned, like staying on top of what's relevant, research, um, you know, uh, reading, because like you said, in especially in the digital world, things move so fast. And I love that you said, uh, you know, ask your questions. Surveying your client list is always something that entrepreneurs should do because we even for a product you know especially if you're a coach a lot of times people will build out a complete program and then they find out that you know what nobody's interested in that they were really interested in this not that and you've spent all this time and energy building out this program but if you had just maybe surveyed um, you could survey your social media crowd you could survey a, a handful of clients or prospects that you have so yeah, I love that because those are practices that we can all do. And like you said, don't be afraid to ask. I mean, that's a big issue. You feel like maybe you're imposing, but you're not yeah. because they want to know, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, if there's if there's one thing that I've learned is that um, you're not going to get answers without asking. Um, and it's something that we've actually encouraged a lot of clients to um, like to pursue is you know when we ask for case studies or we ask for testimonials to share. And a lot of times we get pushback. Like, I don't feel comfortable asking my client to share their story. And I'm always like, why? Like a happy client that has a good experience with you would probably be more than happy to share their story. Um, and I think it's just, a, again, like a pushing out of the comfort zone um, and being okay with, you know, asking for something that you want and more than I would say like nine times out of 10, you realize that people are actually way more open to um, providing you with the answers that you're looking for. Yes, I agree completely. Um, uh, you know, that that's something that all entrepreneurs need to practice and uh, just step into it. It's really just taking taking your leadership and, and uh, getting over the fact that you might be a little bit shy. I mean, we all have to learn sometimes, so you might as well start with people, you know, that you're you're dealing with. And, and I'm sure, like you said, they're all happy, yeah. more than happy to help. So mentorship and entrepreneurship. I know we talked a little bit at the beginning, you told your story about your mentor, Jane. Um, one thing is I, I'd like you to address how important it is, but also, Let's say if you're a younger person and you don't have a mentor, is there anything you could suggest for those individuals to find a mentor or how would they look to, to see if, if there was somebody that wanted to mentor them? Yeah, um, you know, this is such an important topic. Um, and especially now during COVID, I find that the younger generation is actually less likely to ask for help. Like I see it with my nephew. Um, I see it with, you know, some of our friends, younger siblings um, or children at this point where, you know, back, back when I was in, you know, high school or university, um, you know, we went to school and it was a lot easier to sort of source out mentors. Um, and I, I believe it's such an important, um, it's such an important part of development um, because I, I truly believe that there's, you know, people that you meet in your life that have an influence on you and, you know, the things that you navigate and how you navigate things. And so, you know, the, the one thing that I struggled with is over the years, I actually learned this from my mom from a very young age is she always instilled in me a comfort with asking for advice or, you know, asking to do more. And that's sort of what propelled me, you know, when I was at Learners to ask for, to ask Jane, like, I'm bored, like, give me something to do. Like, you know, take me under your wing, show me the way, show me the rope. Um, 
And I think that that's an important sort of practice to instill in the younger generation is to seek it, to, to seek, mm. um, you know, people who can guide you a little bit, you know, and it's important as I think parents as well to ask those questions like, you know, what, what do you like to do? I mean, I'm doing it with my son now who's four years old. Um, I see that he, I see that he loves sports. He just loves sports. And right now during COVID, like there's not much for him to do, but like, you know, I'll ask him like, what do you like to, like, what do you want to do? You want to play soccer? You want to do this? And so my husband, Dave, like seeked out an online virtual karate class for him. And there were like four people that are in the class and he's learning. And, and this old karate teacher is like his hero now. And, you know, the sort of same thing applies as you get older is to, you know, find those key, we call them centers of influence um, and seek out their thoughts and seek out their assistance and, you know, um, see what you can learn from people. And I, I think it's a, it's a very important and um, really good practice for, for anybody. I love that. Seek out your centers of influence and don't be afraid to ask because you're right. I, all of us have different knowledge, different gifts. Um, and if you, you're inspired by someone, what's the worst? I, I was brought up with what's the worst they can say is no. You know, is that going to exactly. kill you? You know, is that, it's just, um, yeah. And, and actually it never does happen. People are more than happy to share what it is that you're doing or, you know, what it inspires them, et cetera, et cetera. And then your world opens up. Then you're just like, oh my gosh, this is so interesting. Like even speaking with you, you know, you're providing so much information and, and insight into this entire digital social media communications. And, yeah, so you're right. It just uh, step out of your comfort zone, ask and um, and seek. I love it. Seek, and seek, also, seek. The... Mm -hmm. And Go also, the, the one thing I would say, yeah, the one thing I would say is also like not not to be afraid of, um, you know, rejection or um, a, a, a non response. So you know, for example, before I got into um, being a paralegal, I wanted to be a lawyer. I actually wrote my LSAT. I applied to law school, um, and prior to doing that, I kid you not, I must have emailed about two hundred and fifty lawyers in Toronto saying, "Let me come and work for you. Like, let, I, I, let me do anything. I'll come and do anything. Let me work for you." And so I ended up out of two hundred and fifty lawyers that I emailed. One lawyer wrote back to me, Joseph Newberger, who's a criminal lawyer in Toronto. And he was like, come in and meet with me. And out of, two, I'm telling you, over 250 lawyers, he replied. I ended up working for him for a year. He's actually a client of ours now. So it's so yeah. awesome that we're able to reconnect again. Um, but again, it was just about like, you know, I, I wanted to go into law. There was something about law that, um, you know, intrigued me. And just source out the answers. I realized over time that I actually didn't want to go to law school. Um, but it wasn't right. until I sort of did that and went through that practice and had Joseph Newberger telling me, you trust me, you don't want to go to law school, <laughs> um, that, you know, that stuff happens. But I really believe that there's certain people that you meet throughout your life and you have to just be open to um, seeking out those opportunities. I love that, Marley. Oh my gosh, that's a fabulous, fabulous story because that's something all of us can do. And now, of course, you, you don't have to send a letter. You can just do it on your computer. And I, I, I wanted exactly. to add that a lot of these individuals, if you're looking for um, to shadow someone or, or volunteer your time, LinkedIn is probably one of the best tools to seek out business um, uh, individuals who may want to help you or steer your career or even go in and do some volunteer work. But yeah, I, I, that is a fabulous idea. So if anyone is on the fence, you have no excuse now. <laughs> we'll send Marley after you yes. for sure. <laughs> so, so team management. Now you have expanded your business, which is incredible. You have, uh, you you know, you have employees, et cetera, et cetera. And that that was obviously a new step for you, moving into that as a boss lady um, or leader lady, more so. <laughs> uh, so you have, uh, and you have a growing team at this point. How do you manage it effectively? 
Um, that is something I'm still working on. Um, I think that effective management and effective leadership takes time. Um, it's definitely something, you know, even, even though we're still, we're, you know, over five years in, um, I'm still learning. I mean, I came from a place where I wasn't in management. I had a manager and I had a boss and I reported to somebody, you know, over me. And so, um, I think that, um, you know, it comes down to, again, like making sure that we're all aligned in terms of, you know, vision and opening lines of communication and making sure that our team feels comfortable communicating, you know, with other fellow team members and also communicating with management effectively and making time for, and this is something we have to get better at, that's kind of a... Um, a setback with COVID, you know, not being in an office and doing things um, virtually is more like team culture um, and, and optimizing team culture. And how can we grow our team um, and grow the relationships effectively? And I think that, you know, a happy team is an effective team. And you know, there, there's times, of course, where pressures are higher and, you know, especially with COVID and dealing with clients who have anxiety about their businesses and team members who are working from home, who have children at home or who are working from home and live with their parents or whatever the situation is, is just being understanding to people's situations and being there for one another. Um, and I think that that's really important is just like developing a sense of understanding and a sense of community and managing that effectively. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, because we're working in such close proximity nowadays, not necessarily in the office, but uh, it, it's it's like a working family is what I call it. So, you know, yeah. when, when you all support each other, then that's when you're aligned and that's when your business excels because everybody's got an interest in, it's not you're the boss and I'm the employee and you can, you know, just yeah. at the whim fire me. No, because we're all invested here. So yeah, I think that's so important. And it's, it's I, and I know you're learning as you grow, as you grow and you go. Um, but it's it's, I, I feel that you're, you're doing a great job because just as we got on, you said that, uh, you know, you had some employees there with their children. So I thought, oh, that's great. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. nowadays, well, you know, you're, you're still more secluded with COVID, but, uh, you know, you bring the pets, you bring the kids, you know, as long as you get your work done, uh, it doesn't mean you have to be in a cubicle all day, <laughs> you know, staring at four walls. Yeah. That, that's the old days, you know, the young right. kids don't even know that. But uh, so you're a mompreneur, what I refer to as a mompreneur, mm -hmm. and you have so much on the go. Oh my gosh, your children are young, your business is young, your husband and you work together. Um, as you just said, you're hiring team members all the time now because your business is expanding. What do you advise other mompreneurs and how do you ma time manage? I mean, I can't even, I can't even go there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, some days feel like a whirlwind, um, for sure. I think that um, it comes down to a, a time blocking. I have found that time blocking to be just very effective. Like, you know, especially when, I mean, my kids are in daycare, so thankfully that, you know, they're out of the house, but there was a time when they were home um, for quite a few months last year. And, you know, when there's a COVID case, the school, the daycare shuts down for two weeks and we're, you know, back at home all shacked up together. And there just needs to be a method and there needs to be a time like Dave and I would have, you know, a couple of hour stretches. And while he was on, I was with the kids. And while, you know, I was on, he was with the kids. We got alone time. Um, and, you know, I, I've said this, I said this, you know, during our first call is I, I really believe it takes a village. Um, I, I believe that that village is not necessarily just your, you know, in-house or, um, you know, uh, in-person support, but it's also, you know, the time you take to talk to your friends to vent, the, um, you know, employee uh, communication, the, you know, venting, I, I vent all the time to my sister-in-law and like, you know, maybe, you know, she's, she may not be there to like pick my kids up and help me, but like, at least 
I have somebody to speak to about it. Um, and just relying on people to sort of help you navigate the time. Um, and I think that, you know, when, when it all comes down to it, if you can just properly um, time block your, your time and properly prepare, um, and that's important for, for, you know, for moms is to, for your kids to sort of understand some sort of schedule. There was a time where schedules were out the window in my house at the beginning of COVID, you know, back in March, April last year, where my, you know, at the time two and three year old were going to bed at like 10 30 PM and waking up at nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> um, but, you know, as soon as we went back onto a schedule with some sort of consistency, like we were all happier. Um, mm -hmm. So I think, time management. I think time management is, is a really big thing. And then just, you know, putting in place those um, sort of vehicles of support. Yeah. What, whatever that may be to sort of help you, you know, navigate it's, through. Absolutely. Yes. Be, I like to call it vehicles of support <laughs> because we, women especially, we need, you know, we need to vent, we need to, you know, express what, what's happening in our lives and uh, we are connectors. So, I think that's, you yes. know, you're right. It is a village. And when you can rely on those, because I have a couple of sisters and they're both professionals. Well, I have several sisters. What am I talking about? They're all professionals. They're all entrepreneurs. And they rely on each other to help each other. You know, one's a professional chef. So, you know, she helps with the other one who's a stockbroker. And, and then the other one's a realtor, you know, and, and unfortunately, those ones aren't all in the same city. But you're right. We all help help each other, and and that's the way we can get through so much more in our life, and it makes it richer too, you know, because we we it's 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 yeah, a give and take. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So I have one question here because we're on the epic vision zone, and that I love to ask yeah. every guest. And if your life were an epic story, what would the title be? Whew, um. I think that was one question I didn't read and now I'm on the spot. Um, <laughs> I know most people see. don't because it's at the end. Um, I think that's that's a great question. Um, I want to say tenacity. One word, bold, and you know, just about pushing through and just going. Get get after it. Like fail, get up, keep going. Just I love tenacity. it. Ten tenacity. That would be a book I'd pick up for sure. I'd be curious. I'm going, okay, go. what's this all about? <laughs> I love it. Tenacity. Great title. Now, just share with our, our audience your offer because you have a very generous offer that you wanted to uh, put out there for everyone. Yeah. So, you know, just as we spoke about um, earlier, the importance of brand positioning. Um, I, I, I was thinking about what we could possibly offer um, somebody who, you know, wants to, um, you know, attack the social media and the digital marketing landscape and where to start. And um, I think the very first place to start is, again, your, your brand positioning. We call it a brand guide. Um, so the offer is 15% off of our regular brand guide, which you know, sort of has a range depending on, you know, your business, your industry. Um, we do have ranges of pricing, but basically anybody who sort of comes through from, you know, Epic Vision would, you know, there's there's a voucher and, um, you know, present that to us and we'll give you a 15% discount on your first digital brand guide or revamped brand guide. I know we deal with a lot of clients who already have a brand guide, but they want to update it, you know, enhance it, elevate it. So we, that that's, that's the offer. And I think it's a very sort of timely and good place to start is spending time. And I think that's one of the most overlooked elements is spending time really drilling down your brand and having that brand guide sort of provides um some clarity yes absolutely uh, a question for you is the brand guide a, a digital download or is it something that you walk clients through is it is it a digital um yeah so download? the process okay. basically yeah, so we, we have an internal process for creating a digital brand guide um, where we have a, um, we, we would have about an hour and a half meeting where we have a series of questions, like a questionnaire, um, you know, it ranges from, you know, 
tell me everything about your business, tell me everything about your audience. We really sort of poke and prod those questions out of you. And then we take all of that information from the questionnaire and we develop a digital brand guide that is a digital download that we would send you. Um, it would have you know, your, your brand positioning, your audience, your target audience, your mood boards, your colors, your logos, mm -hmm. your fonts, your all of that. And it's pretty much the, the holy grail of your, your brand for your company. Um, and it can be used to, you know, if you're in the midst of redeveloping your website, most web developer developers will ask you what your brand guide is to give them sort of direction on color schemes and fonts and imagery and that kind of thing. So it's really just sort of the overall direction of your whole brand for your company. Mm, I love it. I'm so glad I asked you. I, I had no idea. I had a completely different vision. So for me, what I heard, it's more, it's like a discovery brand call because you said that you get an hour and a half. So that is, that's really valuable. Wow. That's Yeah. That's so fantastic. we would go through that. Yeah. So we would go through that call and then we would develop a brand guide that that's yours. You know, um, you own it, right? It's yours to do what you wish to do with it. I love it. I, I think that that's essential. Oh my gosh, everybody should take advantage of that because like you said, you can take that and that could be your foundation and then you build from yeah. there and who all kinds of light bulbs will start to go on because like you said, you ask opening questions that get the the wheels moving you know because often we don't know what questions exactly. to ask our, ourselves so that is fabulous offer thank you so much marley and everybody be sure to go to mar yeah be sure to go to marley's bio page on the summit directory where you'll find the links to all of her information and their website as well and her offer and be sure to look up Marley on LinkedIn um, and other social media platforms. I'm sure you're on all of them. <laughs> no, no, no problem. <laughs> and be sure to follow me as well on Instagram at Jane Applegath and check out how you can become an epic entrepreneur and make your dreams come true at janeapplegath.com. Once again, this is the Epic Vision Zone, transforming your dream into epic success. And thank you, Marley, for being here with us. Congratulations for signing up for the Female Entrepreneur Revolution. We're bringing you some of the most exciting female entrepreneurs from around the globe to share with you their knowledge, their ideas, their inspiration, and more importantly, their resources to elevate you to prosperity and freedom. And by being here, you're on the cusp of something great, your epic future. I'm Jane Applegath, founder of the Epic Vision Zone and producer of the Female Entrepreneur Revolution. Be sure to get your VIP pass and join me after the summit on June 16th for a very special VIP coaching session where we'll have hot seating, summit Q&A, and a special guest appearance by one of our speakers just for you, where we'll ignite your vision, up-level your confidence, and set you on the path to your dream's epic success. This is your opportunity calling. It's time to take action. Get your VIP pass now. I can't wait to see you on the other side.